Good day and welcome back to another episode of the shit my wife brings home. Today we have a fluke multimeter that was sitting on my desk here. Today we're going to go ahead and see what's going on with this guy here. This is not the first one that I've had on my bench here in the last couple weeks. And that one had a broken plug on it. The piece inside had broken off. Well, it was a bit of a pain to get out, but it only took me about 30 seconds. And instead of sending the unit in to get it repaired, they just got me to remove the pin and I got a cup of coffee out of the deal. So I'm not sure if it's the next on the bench service that costs $400. So let's have a look here. So I've removed the cables here. I did get a note with this. It said that the, the 12 volt is not working on it for reading. So that could be a couple of different things, but for the first part, we'll crack it open and have a look. We'll test the fuses that are in here. There should be two of them. And uh, if uh, something's wrong there, we'll go ahead and replace whatever needs to be done. We'll check the battery as well while we're in there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take off the back case here. So a lot of the times there's no need to, you know, worry about uh, cracking into these things. There's not too much to them. Most of the, I, I just don't understand a $400 service charge for uh, uh, getting something repaired, a flat rate fee. Uh, my shop fee, uh, when I had it open to the public was a $25 uh, fee for me to look at it. And basically that covers any costs. If uh, I, you decide not to go ahead with the repair and you leave it in my shop and I have to either recycle it or uh, get rid of it. So that's what the $25 fee was. And um, just kind of a commitment thing. Yeah, it was just a commitment thing for people to uh, just know that they have money down. And that $25 would be taken off at the end of the total price of the repair, which was basically my time plus the actual cost of the parts. So let's go ahead and I think this guy here, we should be able to just pop it from the top here, just get around the edges here. It does have this rubber seal on it, but you can usually just pop it up and then this top part will come out. Sometimes a little picky. Oh, there we go. We're in. A little bit of dirt there and we'll get in a little closer here. So I'll show you uh, what's going on. So we have our nine volt battery here, our ports here. I guess you could Probably, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull that battery off for a moment here. Oh, isn't that nifty? I broke off the ground for it. So uh, yeah, I would say we have to replace that battery because now it has no ground. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do that. But I just wanted to pull this out. See if there's anything cool on the back that I could see. Nothing really without taking another screw off. So we'll just go ahead and we'll leave that there. I'll note to remove the, the ground there from the dead battery. Now dead battery. And I'm just going to go ahead and grab my multimeter here and uh, I don't think I have any pliers here. I'll just try pulling it up from the sides. Worst case scenario, if I wreck this, I'm not worried. There we go. Just pulled that tab right out there. I'm not worried because I have more connectors for the 9 volt. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a continuity test on the fuses here. 
and I suspect it's the one, but we'll see, just to make sure. I've had this multimeter for a long time, uh, back when Radio Shack was still around. Um, all right. So we got a little bit of sound there. We'll go over to this other one. And we're getting nothing. This fuse is gone and that's why it's not reading the 12 volts. So we'll just pop that guy out. The great part about the power of YouTube is all of a sudden, pow, the parts are in my hand. So I have a replacement fuse and a replacement battery for this unit. So what I'll do is I'll pop that guy in there. And we'll just double check, make sure it's good. Okay, we have continuity on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this new battery in. Maybe, if it wants to go to its home. There we go. Get that all in there. So that's all good now. Uh, hopefully now we should have uh, it so that it'll read uh, the 12 volt uh, on it. So we'll just go ahead and put it back together here. Always start with the simple things first. Replace the battery, replace fuses that are blown, and then go from there. You can always do more. Um, but if you start with thinking it's something else before you get to do all the hard stuff and find out it was something simple as one little fuse, then, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. And this is basically just simple diagnostics. Start from the simplest of issues, no different than a computer. First thing you do, power it off, power it back on, or whatever the whatever might be the issue. Um, you, you always start with the simplest thing to try to fix it and then you work your way up. And I'm not saying that, you know, this will fix it forever. There might be a problem with it. It might blow this fuse as well. I wasn't there when it was blown, so I don't know what the case scenario was on it. I just got it left on my bench. And yeah, here you go, fix this. Now I was hoping to test it with this, well maybe we can still test this battery out since we know that's ground. So, I'm going to go ahead and let's go, uh, technically it shouldn't be reading if it's working, if it's not working, if it's reading, it's working. And uh, let me just get this. But it is reading the 12 volt, well, 9 volt uh, on here. So it is working. So let's go ahead and we'll test it out one more time on the bench uh, power supply. Okay, so I've got my bench power supply here. I'm going to just turn that guy down. I'm going to power on. my mic Ronta and then we're gonna power on this guy
I want to go right up to 12 volts or 12 point let's go 12.5 on here and so that's pretty close I'm quite happy with the result there it is actually reading a lot better than my Micronta by the looks of it based on what it should be we are reading 12 volts on it so when it comes down to it I think this guy is back to working uh, we can even bump it up to let's go to 13.8 yeah we're good dial that down back to zero perfect So that's about as much as we can do with the Fluke 88 here. Uh, at this point, uh, it's working. The 12 volt is working on it, so it's good to go back to them. Uh, this ground, though. So on the probe here, the it, it's just from the deformation of how they were winding it up, and it's caused a break in then the line here. So unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about that. Uh, yeah. So the good news is he can just order a replacement ground cable and he's good to go. So that's it for me today. Thanks for watching, everyone. You have a wonderful day, a wonderful week, and we'll see you next time. Take care, eh?